Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome to Fabric Chicks Facebook at live uh, at noon. Um, all right, girls, welcome. For, uh, officially, welcome to Fabric Chicks at noon. Um, sorry, we're kind of discombobulated, but I'm, you're used to that by now. If you've followed us for any amount of time, you can totally relate because we just do the best we can and keep on going. So yesterday, I we did a Zoom class yesterday, and um, oh, let's see. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Cindy Gygax. Um, that's all that it shows me, but I think there's four other people, but it doesn't tell me your names. Hi, Kathleen. Um, so Roger is supposed to be filming, but he is on the line, I think, to make a doctor's appointment. And last I heard, he's number 24 on the wait list. So I think he's going to spend the rest of the day waiting online. Um, thank you, Rondi. Um, okay, Carolyn, pay attention to the road. <laughs> um, hi, Fran. Um, hi, Peggy. Um, okay, so yesterday we did a Zoom class that um, was for this pumpkin panel. And I kind of just want to do a recap because after we ended the Zoom class, I went and thread painted these. So I did a little bit of homework after we ended. So just so you can see, and then I'm gonna cut out all of my elements and put them on a canvas with some ribbons and some crazy, just random stuff. So I've got some of this that I'm gonna incorporate somehow, I'm not sure yet. Um, but Ann Lyndon Meyer, I especially wanna say thank you to, um, to being our guest on the Zoom and giving us all the great ideas. I loved, loved, loved the pumpkin with the witch's feet upside down that you got at the dollar store out of felt, cheap crappy felt. But on a seasonal panel for a wall quilt, it's perfect. So just remember to always be on the lookout for different projects, different ideas, different um, bindings. Because um, there's always, oh my gosh, Dorothy Bear. She is new. I hope I didn't mess up your name. She's new. I um, And we want to welcome you to this crazy Fabric Chicks life. We do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon. And I believe Christy just sent me a text message saying that you won the Instagram. Um, I, I don't even know what the giveaway was, honestly, but you're the winner. And um, it was for sharing our Instagram page. So we want to thank you for sharing and we want to thank you for joining. And if you can just contact Christy with your information, we'll get whatever the prize is to you. And maybe I'll post later what it is or Christy will post what it is. Um, it, cause I don't want to say what it is cause it might be the wrong thing that I'm not sure. So anyways, anyhow, and then the other winner, we had two winners, one on Instagram and then one on Facebook and our Facebook winner is season. And, um, I just want to say thank you to season for entertaining us every day, um, every day this month. And maybe because it's so popular, we'll have to do it. We'll have to force her to do it for Christmas. She could do little skeleton gnomes. Oh my gosh. Uh, Season, you could do it every day for the rest of your life. Um, oh, okay, Christy just posted. It's the, um, it is the, Dorothy, you won the Halloween panel that you can bedazzle into pennant banners or put it into a quilt or whatever your heart desires. Um, so lucky you, we will get that into the mail to you. Um, so anyways, yes, Phyllis, you can still order from last Friday. Um, here, Devin, post. Um, here are all of our boxes. Um, Debbie is busy trying to get everything cut and um, an invoice so that we can get that shipped. So typically, if you're new to watching, on Mondays and Wednesdays, we do demos and techniques and tips and things. And then on Fridays, we do a huge sale. But So this whole mess is left over from last Friday's sale. We're working on it. Um, Gracie, so my kids are helping out today. Sometimes it's hit and miss whether they show up to work or not. But Gracie has picked a panel of the day, but there's only a few of them. So the first people to respond can have it. So it's 50% um, off. So what price does that make it, Gracie? Six seventy-five. $6.75 for these panels. So if you want it, um, just put it in there. Um, 
Gracie, it's the elf book. The elf on the shelf. You have to come over here so they can see it because your brother's sleeping. He's not paying attention to you. So this panel is the elf on the shelf. That's the panel of the day, but only for you guys on Facebook with fast fingers because I think we only have three or four of them. So if you're into the panel of the day, elf on the shelf, it is $6.75. Just type in that you want it and we'll get it shipped out to you. Um, okay, hi Beverly Ann. We will do, a few of you missed the pumpkin class yesterday, so we will do that again as another Zoom. Um, and so Wednesday, this week's kind of special because we're getting ready to take the kids for fall break. Um, so Gracie says she's being, they're being held hostage. They do not want to go to Santa Cruz and spend a week on the beach. Spend no. Halloween at no, the boardwalk. How no. fun is that? No, we don't. Um, so anyways, um, thank you, Rondi. She's pretty cute when she wants to be. Um, Beverly Ann, we'll get you a pumpkin panel. Can you write that down, Debbie? Yeah. Beverly, Beverly Ann wants, wants a pumpkin panel. Yeah. Panel. And then um, Carolyn Gavinich wants the elf on the shelf. Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Carolyn, Gracie says hi, and, and thank you for stopping before you're typing. <laughs> I don't want to cause any accidents. Um, but... Um, Okay, so we have two, well, we have three special guests this week. Wednesday, we have um, Double Trouble. Peggy and Penny are coming from um, Modesto, Ripon area, um, Central California, I guess, Centrally North California, I guess. Um, they're going to come and do demos and um, mini lessons for us on Wednesday at noon at live. Um, so Peggy's going to be um, giving us tips and tricks on hand, um, hand work, and Penny is going to be showing us how to do a two-hour panel quilt. So I'm excited for both of those. They're both a hoot. It's going to be fun. So tune in Wednesday at noon. And then on Friday, we have um, one of my reps, my rep for E.E. E. Shank, Trish Lyles coming. I hope I said her name right. Um, Trish Lyle's coming to do demos on the sashers and um, the sashers you can do multiple things with it. You can do bias bindings, you can do bindings, you can do, um, she's going to be demoing how to do a rug. So it might be a good way to use up our scraps, I'm not sure because um, I haven't actually seen it. She just told me about it and it sounded wonderful. So that's what we're doing on, when, on Friday. And then we're all, she's also going to be demoing a coloring technique. And if you belong to Fabric Chick Stitch Along, you saw it. Debbie Clarkson has posted several times her um, Salem Witches um, by Crabapple Hill. So Trish is going to be demoing that. And she'll have the products here for you guys to purchase. Because I know it, there's nothing more frustrating than seeing something demoed and not being able to get the product. So, um... So that's that. Um, okay. And um, hi, Sue. Hi, Myra. Okay, so I'm going to do a demo today, just kind of a recap on what we did in the pumpkin class. So here are a few of the leaves that I did. Are you looking? You want me to show them? 75 times. If you could just keep focused and show them what we're doing. Um, so here I did, um, you can see it's kind of crinkly in the basket because I did fabric magic behind. So I did fabric magic behind. I didn't have it pinned very good, so it, it fell under. Um, but I don't really like the color that I chose. So I'm just going to show you how I um, manipulate, if you can look right here where I'm working. So if you look, these yellow... Um, threads are kind of too um, too much, too bright. So I'm just going to take a um, fabric marker. Any fabric marker or Sharpie will work. Sharpies might bleed a little bit, but I'm just going to color those in a little bit just so they're not so distracting. Sometimes you just want to add texture, but you don't want the variegated thread that's going to distract. So I'm just going to color those in so they're not so distracting. But I love how the texture from the Fabric Magic puckered up my fabric about 30%. So 
So I'm so that's kind of what I'm going to do there, and then I'll show you. I'll work on this a little bit every time, before till we um till we get it done. You guys get to be through the whole process right here by my side. So if you know anything about me, I like to experiment with different things. Um, I always like to push the envelope. So I have in my thread, and it's all wound around itself. Um, in, in my thread holder, I have a 12 weight variegated. So that's this one here. And then I have a 30 weight rayon. And what I've done, because we have these needle holder, these thread spool holders, I've got both of them on here. Did you see the spool holders? That is what I'm looking at. Okay, perfect. So, um, he's almost asleep, so it's hard to know if he's really paying attention. So on these leaves that we've already shown you, I've used um, this, it's a sulky, probably a 40 weight, variegated, and then a wonderful uh, 50 weight. So these two threads are what I put through my needle at the same time in the same needle, not a double needle. But if you've got steady enough hands and good enough eyes and a big enough eye in your needle, like a 90-14 uh, top stitch needle, you can thread multiple threads. I've never tried it though with a 12 weight and a 30 weight. I think that could be pushing it. But, okay, we're going to try it here, and Devin is going to, um, to pull it up. Um, I, and so I always pull up my, um, oh, I should have a needle here. So I always pull up my bobbin thread because I don't want it to make a mess underneath. But it might be a mess anyways because my... Um, I'm asking a lot of this little cheap machine um, to mm -hmm. handle the 30 weight and the 12 weight. So I've never tried it. So we might have some breakage. It might have to go just to the 30 weight or just to the 12 weight. So I've got my open toed needle on and, and I'm just kind of doing a rough zigzag. I am going to tear this whole, um, I'm going to tear this whole, uh, leaf and project apart and then put it on, applique it onto a canvas. So I'm just doing the veins right now and I can totally tell there's a problem with my tension here. So I don't know. I'm going to try it. It's like it's too loose. So I'm going to try to tighten it up a little bit and see if that helps. If it doesn't help, I'm not too worried because I'm going to quilt over it and I'll be able to couch it all on. And then I'm just going to kind of do a rough zigzaggy kind of a little, I'm not too worried about the berries because I'm going to cut those out. So typically I would do a lot of this free motion quilting on my long arm as I quilt it, but I'm trying to do it with the domestic machine because I know that's what most of you have at home. So if you're not real familiar with um, or real comfortable with free motion thread painting or thread stitching, this is a perfect um, opportunity because a lot of times when you build a collage, you spend three or four days just building the collage. And then you don't want to mess it up with your thread painting if you're not that com confident. So, so a panel is perfect. What do you have to lose? But, I mean, a panel is very inexpensive compared to your time building a collage. And if you get off the line, you do not care. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of come back because I missed a spot and I don't want to break my thread. So it's like kind of two leaves here. So. 
and I can tell my machine is not really liking my machine's not really liking this thick weight of thread but I figure as long as it will keep going I'm gonna force it to do it so this is what Can you see that? That's what the, it looks like thread painted. So there are a little few loops here, but I don't really care. I'll kind of couch those down when I quilt it. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, all right, Kathleen, I'm so excited. Kathleen is coming up to the shop today. So we'll see you in a bit. Um, Sue, thank you for sharing. Nan Willis, your package i tracked it and it says that it's being held ooh, at a post office i think that starts with an m maybe um it's being held at a post office due to your request so i don't know if you had your stuff put on hold or something but that's what the post office said um so that's just to show you some some thread painting and how simple it is get a panel practice on the panel and then the other thing that we demoed yesterday during the class, um, let's see here, is the double-sided leaf. So I'm going to incorporate a lot of these leaves into my collage pumpkin -y project that I'm going to cut out and put on canvas. But here is what a double-sided leaf looks like. So you're going to take your fusible, any, whatever your favorite fusible is, and everybody has their preference. I prefer Steema Seam 2 Light because it has a double-sided sticky. This, however, is, I think, Wonder Under or something crazy, but I had a bunch of it, so I used it. I was doing a lot of leaves because we were doing it for a shop hop, so I just ironed an entire piece of fusible on here. So if I was wanting to make another one, I would just, are you paying attention? I'm down here. It's so tough working with 17 year olds. Well, with your kids. Um, 17, he's gonna be 17 next week. It's so exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna just take this pattern of this leaf and I'm gonna just trace around it. So a double-sided leaf you can put onto, um, the edge of your quilt, you can do it double-sided flowers. You could just make a bunch of these and just throw them on your table with the pumpkins we showed you last week. So I'm gonna trace this onto here. And then the important step, and I, Debbie, do you see any scissors? Oh, here's some. Yeah. Here's some really fine scissors at Fabric Chicks. Oh, I have a pair right here. So I'm just gonna cut this out. Do you know where my purple to the pink ones are? Yeah, these ones? Yeah. Okay, here, now we've got some fine scissors that might actually cut. Um, so I'm just going to cut this leaf, and it's ironed onto the wrong side. If you're new, you can always ask questions, and we'll try to answer them. Um, so I'm going to cut this out. And you can get lots of fun leaf shapes, like say you need a pumpkin leaf. You can get lots of fun leaf shapes off of, go to coloringpages.com or just Google coloring pages. Sometimes it's better if you do coloring pages for adults because you'll get not such kid, more realistic um, outlines because all you need is the outline of the leaf. Okay, so here's my leaf, and then I'm going to iron this. So here you can see it's the same here, but it's just ironed onto the wrong side of the fabric. And then I'm going to iron it onto, I had a rainbow piece of fabric yesterday. Let's see. Let's see in my bag of goodies I can't throw away. Okay, so I'm going to iron this so not to the pretty side. You're going to iron it to the wrong side. You're going to pull it off. You're going to iron here. Uh oh, I think our iron went cold while we were chit chatting. 
you have any comments? Hi, Connie. How's your husband doing? Okay, so here it is, the double-sided. I'm not going to cut it yet from the big piece because I want the bigger piece of fabric to help stabilize it as I do the stitching around. So this is basically what we're going to be making. So I usually start down here at where the stem would start. And I still have that um, 12 weight thread and 30 weight thread. So it might not be perfect tension, but it's an art piece. And so sometimes I don't care about perfect tension. I rather get the dimension of the thicker threads. Um, let's see, I lost my foot. So I'm just stitching around the outside edge. And I do not put my feet dogs down. So some of you, um, your machines, the newer machines, you're forced to put the feed dogs down. If you, um, oops, I just missed a little bit there, so I'm gonna go back. I think my face shield is foggy. Oh my gosh, Devin, were you up late last night? You can't stay awake no. to hold that? Yeah. Oh dear. Okay. So watch it, you don't want to sew your fingers. So then when I get down here to the um, to where I started, I'm gonna come up and kind of just do some veins. Remember, nothing in nature is straight. the variegated threads. If it really was bugging you, you could draw in some veins instead of just freehanding them. But remember, it's just it's just nature. Nobody's going to be counting how many lines your vein has. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this out. Do you have any comments? My thread keeps breaking when painting. Try changing needles, thread, and tension. Any suggestions? Um, who is it? Michelle Fry. Um, I would try, your th if your thread keeps breaking, what kind of needle are you using, Michelle? Sometimes my thread breaks because I'm pulling on it too, and I'm going too fast. So if you're going too fast, you might want to slow down. Um, that's why I love this cheap little Janome machine because it seems to like not be temperamental and it doesn't care. It just kind of keeps up with me. Um, I do have a couple of machines that I can't thread paint on. The thicker threads, they just don't get along with so it does you just kind of have to play with your machine sometimes it can be frustrating but maybe get out your older machines because they tend to not be as temperamental okay if you just joined us remember to um, join us on Wednesday because we've got double trouble coming um, Penny and Peggy are going to come and demo live from the studio. Hopefully we can get it cleaned up by then. But don't hold your breath. Okay, so here's my double-sided leaf. And I've just, I'm going to crinkle it up. I would typically spray it with Tyreal Magic and then let it dry because it will tend to hold its shape better. But I think this heat and bond is so thick that look at how this one, this one I didn't put any Tyreal Magic on and it's, it's just, beautifully crinkly. So you could do a whole table just with coffee table or whatnot with leaves thrown on it. Um, it's super cute if you've made the pumpkins that Leilani showed us how to make. You could make a little display like that. And then this is, I'm just going to talk about it. I'm not going to demo it today because I demoed it last week. 
But in the class yesterday, I demoed how to do the thread painted um, fibery leaves. So all this is, is um, I, I chopped up with my rotary cutter some avocado bag, a little bit of tool, and the red you see there was a piece of like Christmas ribbon that I found on the floor that I just threw in there. I don't, you can see it better on here, this side. And then I just literally put all that stuff between two pieces of wash away stabilizer and I drew the leaf shape onto the wash away stabilizer with a Sharpie. And then I just thread painted it just like I just showed you with this, except for that I filled it in and went over my stitches to make sure that I caught all of the threads. So this is super cute. If I were to sew that onto there, super cute. Or it'd be cute on my pumpkin project, the pan, um, quilt that I'm making. So there, that gives you a few ideas of what you can do with that. Um, and let me see if I've got any comments. Um, so that's about it. I do have, somebody asked me, if we had any black and white fringe and we are moving the entire shop around right now. So I did find this. So if you need this, this is $4 a yard. You can just comment and we'll throw it in your bag. Otherwise, um, that is all that I found so far of the black and white fringe. And then, um, Devin, can you like scroll up your comments and tell me what name it lands on? I need three names. Okay, so we have some goodies, and we're going to throw them. If you're a winner, we're going to throw them in your basket. So if you're new and you win something, we typically don't ship it. If you want it, you have to tell us you want it, and you pay for shipping. Otherwise, we throw it in your bags and baskets that you already have set aside. So so do you have any, Devin? Diana Hensley. Who? Diana Hensley. Diana Hensley. Okay, Diana, I have a cute panel for you. It's one we showed on Friday. It's Sue and Cobb. Sue and Cobb. I've got, look at, I've got cute little tissue for you. Okay, who else? Ann Lindemeyer. Ann Lindemeyer. You get tissue. Look at cute tissue. You can clean up your little dog messes. How is your puppy doing? Let us know. We want to see pictures. Ann just picked up a eight-week-old puppy this morning. Oh, what um, kind? What kind? What kind of puppy was it, Ann? I don't know. Oh, Gracie says if it wasn't a Rottweiler, Ann, it's not worth it. Oh, Gracie. But it's a super cute little puppy. It's like a purse puppy, Gracie. You would love it. Okay, that's all we have, girls. We will see you on Wednesday with um, Peggy and Penny. They're going to be demoing um, handwork tips and a two-hour panel quilt. And then Friday, we're not doing our sale, but we do have one of my sales reps is coming to demo um the sashers which you can use for um binding bias uh like uh leaves and that kind of thing vines i guess and um coloring with crab apple hill patterns and things with shellac or some kind of state textile state medium so lots and lots of information this week um, and then we'll probably do that next week live from Santa Cruz. Also, we'll do interviews. So we will see you girls. Um, oh, Katrina, uh, <laughs> Gracie, Katrina says her daughter wants a Rottweiler too. Best dogs ever. Best dogs well, ever. Honestly, we've had, I've had Rottweilers since I was a little kid, and, but we don't have any right now. All we have is this Max, our crazy, crazy, no, they know about them. um, Chihuahua miniature pincher that Gracie saved from the pound, but she hates him. So, so now he's just my dog. All right, girls, we will see you on Wednesday at noon. Thanks and have a great day.